In this video, I'm going to show you the image of why we need 40 Cascal OPTA. Before talking about the 40 Cascal OTA, let's understand what the OTA is and why you need it. The OTA is an operational transconductance amplifier equivalent to a voltage control current source VCCS simplified model. In addition, the output is a current source, which means the OTA must have high output impedance. Since the input voltage controls the output current, the output input transfer is current divided by voltage, which is so called transconductance. The transconductance amplifier was used for precision amplifier or filtering functions. To achieve a few basic mathematical operations of addition, subtraction, integration, differentiation, and so forth. Therefore, the transconductance amplifier was named Operational Transconductance Amplifier OTA, to emphasize it is an essential building block of many modern analog and mystical circuits. Again, the OTA can implement lots of analog functionality, and that's the reason you may need it extensively in any circuit image. After knowing the OTA and why you need it, let's nail down where we may place it in a system block. The most popular placement of the OTA is the quantized system, such as analog to digital converters (ADCs) or digital to analog converters DAX. Owing to the transconductance controlled by bus current, the gain of the OTA can be adjusted as an automatic gain control AGC or variable gain amplifier VGA. In addition, the frequency bounds of the transconductance can be adjusted by arranging a few OTAs and capacitor elements. We can implement a few filter responses such as high pass, band pass, and low pass filters. The rest popular placement of the OTA is to press in a negative feedback loop for precision control purpose, such as the DC feedback to reduce the DC offset voltage, and a low dropout regulator LDO to reduce the supply noise. After knowing what the OTA applications are, we would like to know what an ideal OTA should be. As you can see in the OTA image, an ideal OTA shows an output current that is product of the transconductance of the OTA multiplied by the differential input voltage. Then, the output voltage of an ideal OTA is a product of the OTA output current and its low resistance. Therefore, the voltage gain between the output and input would be the product of the transconductance GM of the OTA and the low resistance RR. Again, the transistor's transconductance is proportional to a bias current, so we could control the amplifier's DC current control the OTA transconductance easily. Lastly, the main purpose of the ideal OTA would be high input impedance, high output impedance, and high voltage gain. Even though other properties of the OTA are important in a real OTA, let's begin with how the real gain is. We could start with a simple OTA image and the voltage gain is the GM times RR. The GM is the input transconductance of M1, 2, and the RR is the output impedance RO3 of M3 in parallel with RO2 of M2. In advanced technology, the transconductance output impedance is limited, and the DC gain might not be big enough to meet your needs. What should you do? Correct. 
either increase the GM of the R, but which one is more effective to boost the DC gain? Bingo! Increasing the GM may require more current, which might cost more power if noise was low enough without wasting the power further. So, how do you increase the output impedance effectively? Right, we've shown the cascade current source image for a while, and you may know adding the cascade device will boost the impedance effectively and easily. Therefore, a simple OTA can be improved with so called telescopic OTA, adding the cascade device and the output rod. The DC gain of the simple OTA was on the order of GM times R, and the DC gain of the telescope OTA is on the order of GM square 2 multiply R square, which is another GM R gain boosting. Unfortunately, we might introduce another issue in the telescope OTA. What is it? Think about your cascade limitation images for 5 seconds. Correct. We may need to connect the OTA in a feedback loop more much often. The OTA image shows you the M4 and M2 would constrain the output swing range. First, for the M2, the VR must be less than Vx plus one threshold voltage VTH2 to keep the M2 in saturation region. Second, for the M4, the VR must be greater than the gate bias VB and the gate of M4 minus one threshold voltage VTH4 to keep the M4 in the saturation region. Third, the VX should be VB minus VGS4. To be clear, the hello images show you the final allowable swing range is less than a threshold voltage, which is too little to make the old UTA useful in most applications. So, what can we do to mitigate the headroom issue here? Think about all the almost headroom images here. Bingo! If both the input and output device are all almost or PMOS, the headroom control is nature. The only hope is from the different type of device at the input and output path, respectively. The simple folding images here show you the idea of applying a different type of device that would decouple type voltage level constraint between the input and output. The allowable swing level would be an exercise for you. But do you see any minor issue with that? Think about the biasing images for 5 seconds. Right, a high current or even double current is required from the complete fully cascade image. The good news is that still worth compared to the simple OTA since the DC gain boost is still more effectively in a cascade in terms of the added current. Seems like the fully cascade OTA is the only choice. Do you have any other idea for boosting the gain effectively and simply? Think about the gain multiplication images such as GML times GML for 5 seconds. Bingo! As we discussed in the CTOE gain boosting design, we can cascade multiple simple OTA stages to achieve a total higher gain. Also, if two stages is not enough, we can cascade more and more stages without degrading the swing range too much. From the CTOE video, the total bandwidth will shrink because of the cascading effect. Do you see any other issue? Think about the passive images for 5 seconds. Correct. Due to the capacitive passive, there are some interactive patterns between each stage to form a feedback loop. Rows passive pole and zeros will cause positive feedback because of a high gain and then the output will oscillate and the OTA becomes an oscillator. What can we do? Yes, we could do a 
Stability Compensation by introducing a dominant pole with a few compensated elements like a resistor and capacitor. In addition, the extra dominant pole means the bandwidth of OTA was decreased a lot intentionally. Therefore, the low operational speed and stability risk with more design effort would be the reason that most people may still prefer the 40 cascode OTA instead of the multi stage OTA. Here are a summarized image of why you would prefer the 40 cascode OTA. The simple OTA may not meet the gate requirement, and then telescope OTA would be used to achieve a high gate application. But with an output high swing requirement, the telescope OTA may not apply. Therefore, the 40 cascode OTA would mitigate the swing constraint a bit and keep telescope OTA high gain properly with a little higher current. To maximize the swing ability, a multiple stage simple OTA would achieve high gain and highest swing at the same time. But operation speed is limited with a big design effort. From the summary table image, the 40 cascode OTA has several average performance as follows. It's median gain and median swing under median power and speed, make it more attractive than ours. In addition, the 40 cascode OTA is easier to stabilize the design. Lastly, the 40 cascode OTA would have a larger input comma more range than a standard differential stage. Thanks for your watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from those lucky images, I would love to hear your feedback and please share your comments down below. Lastly, please share your video link with the people who may be better on it.